We're back in Houdini. We're gonna create some Swiss cheese today. Pretty straightforward. And to do that, I've already got a geometry node that I'm working in and I'm gonna hit tab and drop down a tube. Press enter. And the reason I'm using a tube is that I can go ahead and set this to uh, three sides. So I'm gonna change this to a polygon. We'll go ahead and put end caps on it and reduce the columns down to three. That way I don't have to delete an extra face like I would if it were a box. So we've got our, our tube there looking pretty cheesy already. I'm gonna hit tab and type transform and drop down this transform node. That's gonna help us squish the sides in a little bit so it looks a little bit more cheesy. So with that transform node selected, mouse over the viewport, press enter and we should see our transform handled it here. But to get the scale, I'm gonna press E on the keyboard for scale, because of course E is for scale. And in the Z axis, we'll just squish that in a little bit like that. So we get those, just a little bit more of a cheesy little shape there. I'm gonna round this out with a bevel. So we'll do poly bevel. And again, pressing tab with the mouse over this uh, node graph viewport here. And always make sure to check your, your view, your display flags. So make sure that you're displayed on the one that you're actually working on. Uh, for the bevel, I'm just gonna give it a tiny bit of bevel, just a little bit of distance here and just two divisions because I just want a little bit extra geometry here to be able to project to later on when I do the uh, VDB. Now, of course, this is Swiss cheese, so we need to cut some holes in it. So I'm going to drop a scatter which is gonna create a bunch of points for us to copy to. And I'm just gonna set this off to the side over here. And we'll go ahead and visualize that. We can see all the points that it's creating, which is way too many. So let's take this down. Instead of a thousand, we'll do probably 20 is about good. And we'll need our spheres to copy as well. So hit tab on the keyboard and we'll type sphere. Drop this here. Now we need to change this. Instead of a primitive, we'll want a polygon uh, to use in their Boolean operation later. And for scale, we'll go ahead and set this to like 0.1, should probably be about good. And we'll need to go ahead and copy that to our scatter points. So we'll do a copy to points, that one right there. And we need to wire in our geometry to copy, which that's gonna be our sphere here. And then we need to wire in the points that we're gonna to copy to, which is our scatter. And we'll visualize it. Now we've got all these spheres here hanging out, which looks pretty good. Just gonna highlight those and drag them over so they're out of the way. And now I can hit tab and drop down my Boolean. The default Boolean, when you just type Boolean and hit enter like that, uh, is going to be an A minus B, meaning it's going to subtract whatever you put into input B here from input A. So input A is going to be our cheese block, and we're going to subtract or cut out those holes using the sphere. So we'll wire that into input 2 or B. Now we can always go and switch that around if we wanted to, uh, but for this particular purpose, we're going to leave it as is. Now, we also want some variation in the size. Right now, all of those spheres are the same size, so we want to change that up a little bit. The way that we do that is with attributes. Uh, if you haven't used Houdini a whole lot before, attributes are really where it's at. What we want to do is take an attribute that's kind of different for each point and then use that to control the scale of the sphere. We don't want to have to create a bunch of individual spheres manually and place those. That is way too much work. So we're going to use an attribute called P scale uh, on these points that's going to then control the size of these spheres. So how do we randomize that? I'm going to hit tab and we're just going to add an attribute expression. And this is just a really quick way to create a little bit of kind of pre-made code that's going to change uh, all of these attributes, or the, the p-scale attribute per point. So instead of position, which is the attribute p, we want to change scale, which is attribute p-scale. So do that, and everything is disappeared. Don't worry about that. It's fine. We're going to change our expression here using this little drop-down. There's a bunch of pre-made options and one of them is random so that just gives us random size for each one of those spheres we want a little bit more control than that so we also have some options for scale of value and offset value we're going to use the scale of value 
And what that means is that basically we're gonna take this value, this number right here, and then we're gonna multiply it by some random number. So in this case, we can kind of scale this up as much as we want. We can create quite large holes and it's gonna create a whole bunch of different variations uh, within that, that size. So we've got everything up to these, these fairly large spheres all the way down to these little tiny ones here. We might need a few more, so we can go back to our scatter and we'll just increase the number a little bit. So maybe 23, and that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty cheesy, I think. So now let's turn this into some better geometry now. There are some things we'll need to keep in mind when we do this. The smoother our geometry is going in, the better things are going to look. And ultimately, we don't care too much about what this looks like as long as everything is nice and smooth later. So right now, we're using all these triangles. We could do slightly different sphere options. So we could go into the sphere and instead of do polygon, we could do a polygon mesh, which is going to give us nice, clean quads, which might help ultimately. But really, to see what's going to look best, it's best to go ahead and wire this up into a VDB and just kind of see what result we get. For this, I'm just going to use the Side Effects Labs voxel mesh. So hit tab and type in voxel mesh. Since 18.5, that should be built in in the Side Effects Labs tools here, the tool set that should just automatically be part of Houdini. If you're on an older version, you might see it under like game development tool set. You want to check the Houdini documentation uh, for how to install the game development tool set if you don't already have that. But for newer versions of Houdini, you should already have all this stuff built in. So it should be a problem. I'm gonna hit enter and drop this down here and just make sure to visualize it. And we can kind of see what it's doing. It's basically making a, a volume and then just automatically converting that volume into geometry for us. And we end up with this really, really dense grid of polygons. And we also end up with some weird kind of basically aliasing issues here where it's not quite fitting that nice curve that we had. So there are a few things that we can do to fix this. We have dilate and erode, which basically kind of puffs this up a little bit or kind of cuts it down and shrinks in. So that can be a quick and easy way to fix things. I'm gonna leave that at zero for now, actually. That should be fine. We can also increase our resolution. So I'm gonna actually bring this up to 300. You wanna be careful not to go crazy with the resolution because it will take more time to uh, calculate. And we can also increase our adaptivity here, which the more adaptive it is, the more it's gonna try to get rid of unnecessary polygons. So this actually works quite well here. The only problem is our edges are still a little crinkly. So depending on how much detail you want, You'll need to play with that a little bit. One thing that does help quite a bit is to project to original. And what that will do is really just take these polygons that we've created and then project them or force them onto the original shape that we had. Uh, and then we can do post smooth iterations, which works generally quite well to kind of get rid of some of that jagged, those kind of janky looking lines. Now we can also bring our adaptivity down a little bit. That'll help to smooth things out. Now we can also go back into our original um, our sphere here and just increase the resolution on this. Now we're using a polygon mesh. We can also go back to our original polygon, which was using triangles. We can increase the frequency, and we can also add a subdivide to this. And the subdivide is going to make it nice and smooth as well. So I'm going to go ahead and subdivide that sphere see what that gives us. We might actually go ahead and just increase our frequency by one step. Really, the smoother the sphere is, the better uh, overall it's going to be, especially if we're doing that project to original. So it's looking quite good, quite smooth. Jump down into voxel mesh here, and I might just bump up those post smooth iterations just a little bit more. And we can also do smoothing operations here, which I didn't do, but notice that uh, will negate our adaptivity. So if you want to have a lower polygon count, you'll want to use the adaptivity, which means you'll need to skip this VDB smoothing, at least in this particular workflow. So it's looking quite good. Last thing I want to do is just give this a little bit more character. Right now it just looks like a wedge that's kind of been, had a bunch of holes cut out of it. So we're going to add a bend and 
So tab and then type in bend. And actually a bend node lets us do a lot of different things. So we can bend, we can twist, we can scale, we can taper. But before we do any of that stuff, we need to kind of define the size of our, our box. And right now you can see only part of the cheese is fitting in there. And we also need to tell it what direction we want to bend. So in this case, uh, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and bend uh, in the y-axis. So we'll do positive 1 for y and then 0 for the x and the z. For capture length, you can see this box is still not kind of holding our the cheese that we want. So for capture length, we want to use a little short expression uh, with b box. So if I click in there, instead of typing a number, I'm going to type in b, b, o, x, and in parentheses, and it has this little pop-up that kind of tells you the syntax for how to use this. Uh, we want to use the surface uh, node, tell it what we're applying this to, and then, or what we're referencing rather, and then what type of information we want to pull. And the types that we can get are dx min, x max, uh, x, y, z, basically min and max, and then size for x, y, z. And we do it using this d underscore and then whatever uh, parameter we want. So in this case, I just want to use whatever the input uh, node is. So in this case, we have input one and input two. Uh, to get input one, actually, what we're going to do is put in zero. And then we are going to look for the uh, d underscore y uh, size. So we just want to find out how big whatever's coming in in this, this input node, we want to figure out how big it is in the y-axis, and we'll use that for a capture length. So now we can see that this is sized more appropriately for a cheese, but it's still not positioned properly. It's, it's set at the world coordinates zero, but our cheese actually is kind of extends below that. So there are a couple of ways to fix that. We could move the whole tube and everything up, but it's actually probably easier and faster to just set our capture origin based on, again, whatever's going into input zero using bbox. So again, I'll type in bbox, and then in parentheses, again, we're referencing input zero and comma. And this time, though, I want to look for the lowest value, whatever's kind of the lowest point in the y-axis. So we're going to look for d underscore y min, so the minimum number in the y-axis, which will be the bottom of our cheese right here. So now we've got this bend node, and it's caged. It's, it's containing exactly the cheese. If we change the scale or the size of anything further up, then all of this is going to flow through, and bend will still work for us, which is handy. So now let's go ahead and bend this cheese. So I'm going to bend it a little bit, and we can see kind of what it's doing here is bending it back. Now that's not exactly the direction I want it to go, uh, and I would also be, like to be able to turn it, which I can't currently. The reason is that our up vector is in the y-axis, so I'm going to change this to 0 for y, and I want our up vector to be in the z-axis. You could try x if you wanted to, so I'm just going to put positive 1 in the z-axis, and this is going to allow me to turn this around, so I can kind of bend it in a slightly different direction here. So use that up vector angle, something like that. That works pretty good. Bend it a little bit more. I'm going to add some twist as well. So I'll twist it just a tiny bit. Let's twist it like that. We're going to also taper it. So I'll kind of taper it so it's a little bit larger at the top. That twist is maybe a little bit too much. Let's bring that back in. Okay, and we'll make it just a little bit larger at the top. Well, we can also squish it, so we squish it in towards the center. Gives us a little bit more of a cartoony look. We can also change that to smooth. And that's pretty much it. That is our cheese. It's looking much more cheesy. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.